Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our session, Announcing Form Recognizer Cognitive Service. My name is Christine Yokel, and I am a Program Manager for Cognitive Services Computer Vision. My name is Netta Hybe, and I'm a Principal Program Manager in the Applied AI team. Together today, we'll show you, introduce you to our new service, Form Recognizer Cognitive Service. So this is the first session from several sessions happening at Build about knowledge mining. Um, so consider watching the other, going to attending the other session. They're all about knowledge mining and how you can extract insights and, from your content. So AI is comprised of three uh, main uh, solutions. One is AI, AI apps and agents, where you can create the um, intelligent, intelligent conversational AI and bots, and machine learning for creating machine learning models and managing them. This session will be part of the knowledge mining session where you can create insights from your content. And it will, it, it, uh, knowledge mining is comprised of Azure search and form recognizer. This will focus on the form recognizer new service. So there's lots of forms everywhere and every customer and every company has forms. There is invoices, there is receipts, there is tax forms, financial forms, bank forms, medical forms, um, application form, construction forms, you name it, forms are everywhere. And forms come in different types. So keys can be on the top, as you can see at the address. Keys can be on the left. Um, there's multiple tables, check boxes, and I can see multiple types of forms, like different types of forms. Tables that come with headers and, and um, dif different lines, the headers spread across lines. Complex forms like this one with lots of tables and condensed data. And what everybody's trying to do is extract key value pairs and tables out of these forms. And today most people are doing it either manually, so if they have a big team of people taking these forms and keying in, and digitally keying in the keys and the values and the tables. Others have built a machine AI model for every key and value or created templates to extract key value pairs from these forms. This is time consuming. It's tended to error if it's a manual. It's not efficient. It's a very long business process today. And there's a lot of challenges in, in extracting key value pairs and tables from forms. So as we can saw before, there's a lots of different types of forms. Uh, the document quality can be scanned, they can be images, they can be faxes, they can be uh, text PDFs, and they come in different types. So we saw they can come in printed, they can come in handwritten, they can have complex table with nested tables, merged cells, tables that span multiple rows, a lot of tables in one form. So there's a lot of complexity in extracting the key value pairs out of forms. And what everybody's trying to do is extract the data, the key value pairs, and the tables out of forms. So for that reason, we're introducing today the Form Recognizer Cognitive Service, which basically easily extracts key keys and tables out of forms. So as you can see, the forms, and it extracts the key value pairs and the tables out of these forms. The input for the Form Recognizer is forms. And the output is a structured JSON output of key pair values and tables, where one has, you can get the keys, the bounding boxes, um, the value, and the confidence per key value pairs and tables. And, and you can see that we, pr we provide for each uh, key its value, the bounding box and the confidence, where the bounding boxes can be used to uh, overlay back the con and construct the form, and confidence can be used in order if you want to, if it's 100% confidence, you can immediately uh, transfer it to your, uh, to your system. If it's lower confidence, you can put it into validation, into human uh, validation. So form recognizes comprised of two parts. One part is tailored to your form, where it's custom, you build your forms, and you uh, train a model that is customized to your forms. And the other one is a pre-built uh, system where we trained models and we are introducing pre-built receipts today. So the custom form recognizer includes two parts. The step one is you train. You can bring, uh, you bring five sample forms or an empty form. There is no human labeling work. So you bring the five sample forms or the empty form and you train the system on your forms to create your model. So the system is uh, tailored to your form and creates a model based on your form and your data for you. And it's available as a hosted managed service or as a container. The second part, once you're happy with your model, with your chain model, you analyze and you send your documents and you extract the, the structure JSON of the key pair values and tables. There's no human label work. Um, you just bring the five sample forms 
or the empty form to train a model. So there's two parts to the system. The first part is you bring the five sample forms or the empty form and you train the model. Once the, and when you train the model, the system uh, discovers what are the keys, what are the tables, and associates values to keys and entries to tables. And once you're happy with your model, you can analyze your forms, input your forms, and get the extraction, the structure, JSON, uh, key value pairs, and tables from your data. In the future, we'll also introduce uh, ability to customize. So the first release is fully unsupervised. There is no human labeling work. Everything is automatic. In the future, we'll introduce the um, ability for human input. For example, labeling, uh, telling the system, yes, this is a key, this is not a key, and providing inputs to the system so it can improve if it missed something. So how does the system work when you train it or when you analyze? So the first thing is we, we do, we ingest the data. So the input can be PDF, text PDFs or scan PDFs, or images, JPEGs, and PNGs. And what the system does, it extracts all the text and all the information from the file. The second part is we cluster. So once we, um, I, we extract all the text and all the information, we cluster based on the types. So we cluster every form type based on structure and, and content in the, foil, in the form, the different types. Once we clustered, we discover. So once we cluster, we discover what are the keys and what are the tables. Um, and we put every, um, we cl every, every cluster, we give it the, his keys and the tables for a cluster. And then we extract. We associate the values to the keys and the entries to the tables and extract the structured data out of your forms, including the bounding boxes and the classes. So let's see a demo for that. Give me one second for the computer to start. So as you can see, we have here a form. And the form consists of key value pairs and tables. And you can see that the system, everything you see here, the system was trained with five sample forms um, and then analyzed a form. So the output you see here is the analyze of the form. And you can see the system discovered for this form, what are the keys? So bill two, and you see the key here is Contoso, phone number, invoice number. And if we scroll down, we can see that it also discovered the keys that are here, like tax rate, sales, other total. And even the terms here, you can see it here on the bottom. And it also discovered a table where you can see that it discovered the item number and all its values, the description, the quantity, the unit price, the discount. And notice that even for the empty cells, the system will always return uh, empty cells, so you can always reconstruct back the table with all the number of rows. And the output you will get is basically a JSON output, which includes the key, for example, bill two, its value, Contoso, the bounding box for the key and the value, and the confidence. And you will also receive in the JSON output a table with an ID for the table and then the header of the table is item number and all its entries with their bounding boxes and confidence. And this is one type of form. Another type of form that we can see is a totally a different type where it's a mortgage interest statement and the system discovered one mortgage interest and you can see it here, two outstanding mortgage, mortgage origination date, receipt lender's TIN number, and all the information. And the output is always a JSON output with the key value pair as the key, and its uh, value, bounding box, and confidence. So for example, one mortgage interest, its value, bounding box, and confidence. Another example is a table. And you can see on this table that uh, the headers span multiple rows, like employee ID. And the system discovered employee ID and all its value, name and all its values, hourly wage and all the values. And the output basically is a JSON where it shows the table ID, the date for the first row, and bounding box, entries, bounding box, and confidence.
So to show you how form recognizer is used in RPA system, robotic process automation system, I would like to invite Mark Vivianski. Sorry about that. Mark Vivianski, uh, Director of AI and Document Understanding at UiPath, to share that. Excellent. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Netta. I appreciate it. So good morning. I'd like to uh, share with you a little bit about who UiPath is. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with us as an organization, real quick, we are the fastest growing software company in history. Uh, we currently have over 2,100 global enterprise customers who use our platform on a regular basis to be able to automate their processes from back office to mid office to front office. Uh, we have over 350 partners and a very part rich partner ecosystem that allows our platform to be as robust as it is and enable a lot of new capabilities on the platform. And we have over 2,500 employees inside the organization. We're growing a very steady clip. I just presented this slide not too long ago, and these numbers changed quite dramatically. Uh, we also have secured a billion dollars in funding. We have a valuation of $7 billion in the market today. And we're backed by companies like Excel, Kleiner Perkins, Capital G, many of our great partners who have uh, entrusted their money with us as we continue to expand our business. Uh, so beyond the company, what do we do as a business? Why do our customers actually make investments in our platform? Uh, we are all about robotic process automation. So RPA is a category, and it really talks about, or it, it enables this capability for software robots to basically perform the tasks that humans do inside of an organization on a highly repeatable basis and at scale. So. Um, what we do is we then take these tasks and we uh, enable them through scripts that the robots then process day and night, 365 days a year, um, and that we do that integration at the UI layer, hence UI path. So we can actually integrate applications that users use on the screen, move the data from one application like SAP into Excel or Excel into another backend system. A lot of that work that you know, the human tasks are, are being performed then generally are automated. The other key aspect of the platform is low code design. We have a lot of business users or technical people who you know, begin working with the platform. You can download the bits and start working with it in your environment and they discover that it's relatively easy to actually start to build these workflows and then ultimately uh, you know, promote them inside the organization and then get them to the stage where they can be uh, running in production. One of the beautiful things that's happening between these two worlds, uh, robotic process automation and AI, is that they're coming together quite, uh, quite nicely. So I talked about RPA is really about emulating human task activity that's highly repetitive in nature. With AI capabilities, we're really now starting to enter into a new era of smart robots, where with these cognitive skills enabled through AI and machine learning, they can start to do more cognitive tasks like scoring or forecasting or predicting the outcome of some type of business event. And incorporating these machine learning models and artificial intelligence capabilities into the workflow. So that's a big pivotal point within the industry and a big pivotal point for our, our platform overall. So uh, as Netta mentioned, you know, we're looking at the forms processing service, uh, form recognizer service specifically, and it's all about capturing that data that's locked up in your documents and being able to convert that, extract it quickly with a high level of efficiency and quality, and then make that data available for business insights and further operational uh, uh, you know, updates to backend systems. So there's a number of steps involved with that. Um, and this is really where the value of RPA and AI come together, is that we can use a robot to automate the ingestion process. So a robot can say, for example, look at an email that's coming inbound, see that there's an attachment like an invoice or a receipt, extract that invoice and receipt, and automatically you know, start the pre-processing activities of that document, make a call to the form recognizer service to be able to extract the data out, get that return JSON payload information, with the key value pair information, the table level details, as well as the confidence information. In addition to that workflow, you might wanna have things like document classifiers. So when we look at documents in an enterprise type of setting, we can have financial documents, benefits-based documents, HR documents, legal documents. So we have classifiers that can actually detect based upon some of the keywords that are in those documents, what type of document we're actually working with. In addition to that, you might want to leverage some more customized fit-for-purpose machine learning models that are specifically designed for a particular document type. 
Maybe there's some data in the document and you want to be able to do some risk scoring of a vendor that's sending some parts and supplies to a, another country where you haven't seen that type of behavior or activity before. That might be some potential risk or leakage uh, would be an example of that. And then we also incorporate the capability to allow a human a loop. So uh, naturally a robot can automate a lot of these processes, but what happens if that extraction isn't quite to 100%? and we still need a human to be able to see the extraction output and then make validate it or make refinements to it. So that's really where the human loop process comes in. And then finally, the robot can take that data and then move it to back-end systems after it's been either extracted with 100% confidence or based upon the minimum threshold values that have been set by the business rules in the organization or enable that human loop process uh, to occur. But more specifically, uh, I'd like to talk about a, a use case and scenario where we've demonstrated this capability working closely with Meta and her team uh, and with Chevron, our great partner and customer, to be able to take a massive volume of reports that they receive on a daily basis that include drilling reports, completion reports, workover reports. Um, and these reports are quite large in size, so they can be 200 pages in, of size of content that basically needs to be parsed. Um, and then they receive approximately 50 of these documents per day. So literally thousands of pages of documents every single day. There's drilling or some type of activity that's occurring out in a well field or on a rig, for example. Um, so the key thing here is that these reports come from multiple uh, providers or players within those markets, other super major oil and gas energy companies that are mining in a particular field or extracting in a particular field. So we see a lot of variability with respect to the content that's in these documents and how that content's actually laid out in the documents. Um, and so today the process requires a subject matter expert, a drilling engineer or a mud engineer to actually go into that document, inspect that data and then key it into a back end system. So the process can take weeks or sometimes a month to be able to catch up and finally get that data into a usable format. So what we see are all the, the C and the double V. So we have complexity here in terms of the content and the actual layout of that content. We have a lot of variability of how that content's reflected in the forms. And then we have a lot of volume that's coming together. So I'll show you an actual demo of what we produced um, and how the the end-to-end -end solution works. But essentially what we're doing is we're using a robot to be able to pick up these paper or digital documents, ingest them very rapidly. Uh, the robot then will start to do some of the processing. So if we have, for example, a 200-page document, we might want to parse that down into segments of that document and process those individually. Uh, our document processing capability through a robot can enable that. We make the call to the Microsoft Forms Recognizer service. We provide the input of the document itself, then we receive back the JSON payload with the key value pair of the table extractions and the confidence information. If it's required and we want to have a human loop actually see the results of that extraction as well as the source content, we can begin the validation start process and display a UI where the uh, human can go in and inspect the content, make changes to it. And then after that process is completed, the intelligent automation process can begin again. We can then land that data into back-end systems like an SAP or other operational systems or into a data lake for further data analysis. And then finally, what we'll present is how can we take that data and actually drive a Power BI dashboard and it, again, unlocking that data very rapidly to get to the end game, which was using that data for business uh, benefit and purpose. So I won't spend too much time here because Ned already talked about you know, what this intelligent content extraction is. The key aspect here are two things. One, we get the bounding boxes so we have vertices information to be able to then paint a bounding box around where is that data on the actual document. But then even more importantly, at the data element level, we get the confidence score information as well. And that's where we can set rules to be able to say, if, it's, if the extraction quality for a table is meant 90%, that doesn't require a human loop process. If it's below 90%, we would actually invoke that human loop process. And this is a representative of the human loop process itself. So you can see side by side the source document on the right uh, that was sent into the service and the extracted values that came out as a result. And then finally, you know, the whole purpose of getting the data unlocked from these documents is to be able to drive better knowledge insights and management inside the organization. And we'll show the actual demonstration of the Power BI component. So with that, let me go ahead and start the demo.
And I think I can do that by clicking here. Yep. So we're going to start with the completion report workflow. But real quick, what I want to show you is a taxonomy manager. So you can go in and actually define a taxonomy by a particular document type. So here, for example, we're setting up a, uh, a completion report. We can go in and just because there's so much data in there, we might only want a subset of the data from the report. So we indicate that we want the well name, we want the start date. Uh, there's a table in there that can, includes time log data, so the actual time series based information of what was performed during the day by the production engineer. We want to capture that information as well. So we can very easily go into Taxonomy Manager and create this taxonomy and then we can use it across all of the same types of documents that contain that type of data. But if we go into the workflow and we actually look at here in the R RPA tool, this is the robot workflow that we've enabled, if we execute that, the robot basically will then go and inspect the contents of a blob storage area or email that's coming in with the attachment or a file system, pick up the documents, do the processing that we had talked about, which was, say for example, take a 200 page document and carve out 10 pages that are, are relevant content. It will then return that confidence score back to us. And here we show, for example, you know, the 100% confidence is what we are actually seeing in terms of the performance of this with the forms that we are using. Um, the, the human user can go in and very easily see the content through that uh, UI type of display. Another example here is if we get 100%, you know, we're showing the UI example here, but this could just be automated in the back end. The robot's automatically just going and moving that data into Excel or into Power BI or actually making updates into a backend system like SAP. So here's another example of another report. You see, again, the content varies quite significantly. The same data we're trying to get, the time log data, the well information, the well location, uh, the spud date for the well, these are key attributes that we have. And you can see all the key value pair extraction as well as the table content itself. So, uh, that's one way to view it. Then naturally, once you've got that JSON payload, you can take that data and you can put it into something like Excel. Um, if you have some Excel reporting that you want to be able to use, we show as an example all the individual data that we get from each report can be tabbed up by the robot, automatically produces the structure of the report, and then normalizes the data into this format. So you can see essentially what the robot sees in something like Excel. But then if we switch over and we look at the drilling report workflow, so a different type of report uh, that comes in contains similar type of information. Here's the workflow that we're executing here. And again, a robot is performing the process to go and invoke the service and pull up the drilling report that you see here. This is a really good example of a complex form, very densely packed content on a form with side-by-side -side tables and even tables that split multiple pages. Um, and you can see our extraction quality is quite high. We're getting 100% extraction on all the key value pairs of interest, plus the table extraction detail that you see here with the component level detail as well. So again, uh, you know, the human user can very easily go, go in and make modifications to the key value pairs or even add new key value pairs that now they want to add to Taxonomy Manager as an example. So same thing here. We can take the data, we can move it into Excel. So we can, again, take all these different reports and start to normalize this data into a common format. But really, what's important is how do we get this into the business user's hands to be able to then use this data in a meaningful way to be able to make more intelligent decisions about how are we competing against other operators in the field. So we can see across these different reports coming from, say, 40 different providers that are actually drilling in the same field that Chevron is, they can see how much time is spent on non-productive time, uh, time doing repair, time involved with safety meetings, and these types of things. So there's a tremendous amount of intelligence that comes out of that uh, type of capability. So my time is up, uh, but I wanted to share with you what an actual solution looks like uh, in something that we've done in partnership with Chevron and with Microsoft. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. And to demonstrate how Form Recognizer is used also in the financial industry, I would like to invite Super Boss. I would like to invite Super Boss, CEO of Financial Fabric. Thank you. Thank you, you Nanda.
So thank you, Neta. Good morning, everyone. So I'm Subra Bose, CEO of Financial Fabric. We provide data hub services to the $74 trillion investment management ecosystem. We are a Microsoft cloud solution provider, and uh, we are based in New York City. So our clients receive tens of thousands of documents, structured, semi-structured, unstructured, Excel, CSV, PDF, with very rich data embedded in it. And I'm sure you all know, getting data extracted out of PDF documents, especially if semi-structured or unstructured, is a lot of work. A lot of the organizations do that manually today. Some write ETL code. So we picked a very simple problem to work with the Microsoft form recognition team, simple on the surface, but complex in terms of actually getting the work done, to extract data from semi-structured PDF documents and then deriving insight out of it. So prior to form recognition, our solution used to be, probably a lot of you do that today, writing ETL code for every different form type, which used to take weeks long development, right? I see some shaking heads. And uh, it's costly and time consuming, especially when you are dealing with a large variety of forms. With form recognition, the process became fairly simple. We feed five or more documents of same type to the form recognition engine, let the engine learn, and then extract data as JSON, which you saw in Nera's demo, and also Mark showed it. So to walk you through our architecture in terms of how we have integrated the form recognition in our data hub, we receive what you're seeing on the left-hand side, PDF document from the banks, which comes to our file drop. That's the data hub file drop. And then the smart loader, which is a component of our data hub, picks up and then makes a decision based on the form type where to route it. So in case of PDF document, where we already know the template, we route it to the Azure form recognizer engine. And then it gets the JSON output, stores it into the blob storage. And then once you have JSON on the blob store, you can directly feed it into Power BI. Or if you need to normalize the data further, you can store it in SQL or Azure Data Explorer, other sort of normalized database technology. So at this point, I'll show you a quick demo of what we have done sort of under the covers. So I'm going to switch screen here. There you go. So on the left-hand side, what you are seeing is the end user experience. And on the right-hand side, I'll show you under the cover what is happening. So here we have five PDF documents. Uh, coming from JP Morgan Chase for one of our clients. So if I open one of the documents, let's say here this one um, in browser, you see it's a fairly straightforward statement which has one line with some values in it. Now we are going to switch to our job processing server. And here um, I have pre set up the form recognition engine with the sample set so that. The learning is complete. And here, I'm going to run the same five documents one more time. And you will see the output coming as output one here. So I'm going to invoke the car command here. And here, it generated the output one. Let's open it in Notepad++ and see what happened. We will format the JSON. Let's go all the way to the top. So as you can see here, that the data came from the 2826 PDF. If we go to the 2826 PDF, that's the same PDF. And we are particularly interested in the total value here. So let's see whether we can find it or not here. So we will go down a little bit. Uh, here you go, total CCY. It gives the bounding box. If I go down a little bit more, US dollar 85, that's the same value. It didn't make it 84, good thing. Manual entry can. 
and confidence level 1.0. So we can certainly use the data. So then what happens in terms of the end user process? Of course, we feed the data from JSON into Power BI. Here, I have a very straightforward just data table where you see the same data in Power BI. So from document to data to insight, fully automated without manually entering any data. Let me go back to my deck. So to recap the demo, what you saw is the document came in in the file draft. The smart loader invoked the form recognition engine. The JSON output went to the blob store, and then Power BI report refreshed with the JSON data. So um, not only form recognizer makes it like easy, but it's literally no code when you are receiving new instances of forms. You feed the recognition engine, it learns, it generates the data. It comes with a very easy to use um, REST API, which we have used. Uh, our time to market in terms of new form template got reduced from few weeks of development activity or ETL development activity to few hours of data engineering activity. That is a 90% decrease in time or increase in productivity with respect to our overall workflow. The uh, form recognition cognitive services stack is very easy to use. The API is extremely easy to understand. It took us only a few days working with the form recognition team at Microsoft and um, to get the initial solution up and running. The, the confidence level is very important, of course, because you know whether the data is usable or not. Of course, from an accuracy perspective, if you don't have manual entry, then the chance of error is much lower, and with the confidence level, the data becomes much more usable. A lot of our clients had PDF documents where they were entering the data either manually or comparing it side by side with form recognition that goes away. So we are very excited about this technology, so congratulations to Microsoft to bring this stack into the Azure Cognitive Services stack. Uh, we believe that form recognition is a revolutionary stack in the Azure AI and is going to change the business user's life for you know, better, where they don't have to spend the four hours of copying and pasting data and only the rest doing the actual analytics. They will spend more time in doing the analytics. So thank you all, and enjoy Build. Thank you, Neda, for thank having you, me Thank you, Thanks, Subaru. <coughs> so for the first 30 minutes this morning, we've talked about form recognizer and the customization of being able to bring your own forms and tailor the model to work for your specific form. Now we'll switch gears. Another flavor of form recognizer is pre-built models. So we know that out in the world, there's a bunch of, a bunch of documents that are universally structured. So they don't look too different from each other. And so we, Microsoft, can go and train models for you so you don't even need to send documents for training. So the first pre-built model we are releasing in June will be receipts. Uh, it'll be off the shelf, so there's no need to train your receipts. You can just send a receipt to the receipt API and then get fields back. It'll be a, ma a managed service, and it'll be available this summer. Here's an example of kind of the eight fields that we'll extract starting uh, when when it's released for preview. So some of the scenarios that we're seeing, um, there's two big buckets of scenarios. One obviously is expense management. So I'm sure many of you here coming to build from uh, uh, on your uh, for your job for work, you'll have to fill out expense reports and you'll have receipts from Top Pot and Starbucks and all these other places where you have to take a picture and then enter into a system. And so expense management, kind of everything that has to do with that, whether it's entering receipts or auditing, is one big customer scenario we see around uh, this use case. 
The second one that we've been seeing is around customer insights. So you could imagine if you were able to collect a bunch of different receipts from different customers uh, and being able to analyze that quickly, you may be able to understand their consumer behavior, like how much did they pay for different things, how much did they pay when they went to this restaurant versus this other restaurant. For the first version, what we'll support is what we call like the US thermal receipts. So you can think of those as things you get at a restaurant, at a retail, at a gas station. Uh, but we're looking to see how we expand. And the eight fields we support right now are merchant name, merchant address, phone number, transaction date, time, subtotal, tax, and total. So at Microsoft, to test out new products that we have, we work with internal teams to pilot and kind of refine our technology. And so there is an internal team at Microsoft that is using our services right now for receipts. And it's the equivalent of the, the expense management team within Microsoft. And what they've integrated the receipt, uh, receipt API in is audit, auditing the expense reports. So currently today, the, the employee will still enter their receipts and their expense management in the current way. But where this team has started the integration is in audits. So traditionally, they can only audit about 5% of the receipts that come through. Uh, but with this technology, they're able to increase how many they see to see which receipts and which expense reports look like they're, um, something's wrong with them, they don't match, and to pull them out to have someone review and make sure that it's correct. So there's two main benefits to this. One is for low risk reports, for things that employees enter in, nothing looks off, they can just streamline through and get done faster. And so for the employee, you get your money quicker. And then for finance, they're able to kind of just process those without any issues. And then for the ones that do look suspicious, uh, the reviewer can save time because they don't have to uh, go through Kind of all the receipts or all the the reports, they just get the ones that are uh, that look suspicious or look different. Uh, in the current system, along with other signals that the finance team has put into place, they use the receipt API along with that. And if something looks anomalous, then an alert will be sent, and then it will go through you know, to an agent, and then uh, kind of go through that process to figure out is that actually an okay expense report or not. So let me show a demo. Okay. Um, so here's one demo I already ran it through. Uh, but you see a receipt, and then you will see the fields we're extracting. So you have merchant, uh, address, date, the time, the subtotal, the tax, and the total. So the output will be a JSON format uh, with these items in it. Um, one of the great things that we can do with uh, kind of receipts as well as kind of forms in general is our state-of-the-art OCR engine, which uh, kind of powers a bunch of this technology, is really robust and can kind of handle things with lots of noise and kind of different angles. So I'll show you an example of this one where the receipt, so it's like more real world, right? When you like, take a picture, it's not always straight. Um, and we are still able to handle it. Um, so this is uh, the read API for OCR, which you can use separately from kind of form recognizer, but it's what is powering um, kind of forms and receipts. And so here, again, you see the merchant name, uh, the address, all the fields that we talked about before. But kind of on the image, that's a little more different. So this will be available in June, and you'll sign up the same way as you do with form recognizer. So now I'll hand it back over to Netta, and she'll tell you how to get started. So, so far we saw solutions, we saw what Form Recognizer does. Let's see how you can get started. So in order to start using Form Recognizer, the first thing you need to do is create a Form Recognizer resource in the Azure portal. 
once you have that form recognizer user, once, once you created the form recognizer user resource in the Azure portal, then there's two commands that you need to, uh, to, to, uh, to use. First, as we said, is the train, and then the analyze. For the train, we're gonna see a simple Python script on how to uh, invoke the train. And from what you created in the Azure resource, you need to take the endpoint, and we'll see in a second how to do that, the endpoint, the SAS URL, and your subscription key to call the train. And your data needs to sit on the blob, so five sample forms, as we said, or an empty form. And this will construct the post uh, train command. So let's see how it works. So on my blob here, we have five sample forms where the forms look like this. They're PDF documents, that's PDF documents. Different, they're all the same type. And you can see they have some keys on the top, some keys on the left, and a table. And these documents will be used to first train the model and then to extract the data. So to train the model, we have here a Python uh, code where from our uh, Azure portal, we took the endpoint and put it here. This SAS URL from our blob to be able to access the data and our subscription key. And then all we need to do is run this. Just click the run. Okay. So right now this is running. And what Form Recognize is doing is everything we discussed. It's first clustering the data, so it's discovering which type of data we have there. Then it's discovering the keys and discovering the tables. And when it finished discovering the keys and the tables, it will create a model for these type of forms so we can extract the data using this model. So we'll give it a second to run all this and do all this processing for creating our model, create our custom model that is fit to these documents. And we can see the model is created. And the output is a, as a, as a reply 200 with the model ID and then all the documents that were used to train and their status. So it used invoice one, which had page one and no errors. The status is success. You can see invoice two, uh, the number of pages in that document, no, er the, no errors, and the status is success. So we can take our model ID. And basically, let's look at what we're gonna do now. So now once we train them, we have a model and a model ID. We wanna analyze and extract the data. So the next step is basically calling the analyze. For the analyze, we need to take, again, the endpoint where our resource is, uh, the file path of the file where, where, where the document I wanna analyze is, the model ID that I just received from the train, and basically the content type, so if it's a PDF, then the content type will be PDF, it's images for images, and the subscription key. And this will create the analyze. Um, REST API command. So let's see how this works. Yep. So we'll go to the analyze. So same thing, we have a Python uh, for the analyze command where you can see the base URL is our endpoint and it constructs it added to the form recognized v1 preview custom. Then we have the file path which is a document here can see the document that we're gonna analyze. So it's this invoice. We have the model ID, we, we need to take the model ID. Let's take the model ID that we just generated and paste it here. And the subscription key. So let's run the analyze. And the analyze returns um, a JSON output of the, stat of the data. So we'll see it a second in um, Notepad, but you can see from the, the output the key value pairs. So you can see address and its bounding box, and the values is one Redmond and all the data. So you can see the output here. But let's open also the output in JSON so we can see it side by side with the documents. So we can see the, the system extracted. There was 
uh, it extracts the number of pages, so there's one page in this document. It extracts the page uh, height and wide, so you can uh, reconstruct the page if you want. It extracts the cluster ID, so we had one cluster um, built when we trained the model, which is cluster zero, and the key value pairs that were associated with this um, document and uh, model. So address, this is the address, and we can see that this is a multi-value. So the first row is one Redmond suit, Oops, sorry about that. The first row is one Redwood suit, it's bounding boxes and it's confidence. Then the next row is 600 Redmond way, it's bounding box and the confidence. And the third row, uh, nine, the zip code, it's bounding box and confidence. Then invoice four, same thing, the bounding box, the value Microsoft, then the confidence for that. And the system also discovered a table with the invoice number, this is the invoice number, the invoice date, 18, uh, 18 June 2017, and all the bounding boxes and confidence. Invoice due date, charges, bounding box, value, confidence, and the VAT ID. So the system managed to discover from five sample forms, no human labeling, only five, five filled in sample forms, PDF types in this case. The system managed to discover all the keys and values and extract the table from these documents. So to, to train a model for your data, basically you need to write the analyze and then to the train. The API has some additional commands. For example, at the end of running a model, you can do get keys to see the keys the system discovered. Um, if you want to look at what keys the, the system built for model. You can also per analyze, let's say if the form has 100 uh, keys and you want to extract only five, you can specify the specific keys you want to get on the analyze so you don't need to get all the data. You can get only the data that is of interest. So we saw how to train and how to analyze, extract data from forms. And form recognizer has a lot of benefits. So first of all, it's easily, it easily extracts data uh, from forms with no manual labeling. Uh, you can create it based on tailored to your forms. And we saw complex forms. We saw oil and drilling reports. We saw financial forms. We saw invoices. So you, like all the forms, the different types of forms we saw at the beginning, you can take form recognizer and train it to your data to your specific form. In addition, Form recognize includes pre-built models like receipts, uh, which is our first model that we released, which comes, uh, you just bring your forms and it will extract key value pairs for your form. It's enterprise grade in terms of security and privacy. It's available as a managed service and a container. So if you want all the data needs to stay on premise, you can deploy form as a container. If you want to use it in the cloud, you can use the managed service um, in, the, in the Azure cloud. And it's tailored to your form, no manual labeling, Provide five samples or an empty form in order to train your model. So to get started with Form Recognizer, you can go to Form Recognizer um, portal, AKMS Form Recognizer, and request access to the service. We'll grant you access. There's Form Recognizer documentation, Form Recognizer API, and a contact us if you have any questions. These are additional build sessions that you can attend. And these are resources for all the knowledge mining and AI demos that you see at Build. And for now, if you have any questions, we're here to answer them. Thank you. So if somebody wants to ask a question, then you can come to the microphone and feel free. Yes, of course. To the Build sessions, yeah. When we enter the country, we need to fill in a declaration form. So we had to handwrite and fill in a form. Is there any option to read those kinds of forms? So handwriting is not supported yet in our V1. Uh, it's in our roadmap for future versions. Okay. Hi, thank you. Um, we're a recent UiPath customer, and we're also um, here are developers, and so my question is, where should we, where does UiPath fit, where does um, custom development using the forms recognition engine fit in uh, an enterprise strategy? 
Mm. Yeah, so uh, thank you for being a good UiPath customer. Uh, so we actually integrate on the platform. So we have natural integration to the service itself. So you can embed it in your workflows just naturally and define your own customized workflows where you can call the service and get the extracted value out. And then if you want to programmatically work with that data, you're free to do that as you would normally on the platform, or you could receive the benefit of using the validation station type capabilities as well for that human loop type of process. So follow on, um, I'm not sure I fully, so, so is there a case where we would not use UiPath, but use the forms engine directly um, or it is, you, you know, would you say UiPath is always the appropriate? Choice? Sure. Uh, well, if you uh, are expecting the benefit of automation and you'd like to be able to automate some of the task of actually extracting that data, then naturally the platform enables that capability to have a robot perform a lot of the tasks associated with picking up the document, any type of pre-processing that needs to be performed on the document, as well as the extraction through the Microsoft uh, Form Recognizer service could all be done in the workflow, but the service is an individual endpoint, so you could elect to use that as well in custom code outside of the UiPath form if you desire. Thank you. Hi. Um, have you used Form Analyzer, or maybe even do you believe you could use Form Analyzer and, and, and um, something else to um, extract data from less structured um, documents, such as uh, requests for proposals, which in theory, you know, all, it's the same type of content, but it might be in literally different orders, or even something like a restaurant's menu, which again, all menus have the same content, but they're wildly laid out in different ways. So currently, uh, Form Recognizer is used, is, needed, is used for structured data. So for training a model, you need the five samples for the same type, or an empty form where the structure is the same, um, and the keys need to be explicit and on the document. So right now, the solution is based on, is, is a, fit, a good fit for structured data, not for unstructured documents. Have you seen anything that can uh, work with the unstructured data, though? Yes, yeah, so we have solution in uh, Azure AI that can also work with, uh, with unstructured data, cognitive search, and that would be a good uh, session to go to. And the knowledge mining session will demonstrate how to work with unstructured data and get your insights out of unstructured data. Oh, and so that's coming up later? Yeah, so if we saw, if we go back to the, let me go back to the first slide. It would be easier doing it like this. Give me one second. If we go to this slide. Does that help? Okay, one second, we'll go back all the slides. And we'll present this knowledge mining slides again. A quick run back. And here we go. So the knowledge mining sessions will explain how to use uh, unstructured data to create insights from your unstructured data. Form recognizer in V1 is uh, for structured data. Thank you. Welcome. On your receipt recognition, which you mentioned that it was US based at the moment, are you gonna expand that to more global, different languages ports? Yeah, we're gonna look to see kind of um, kind of after preview where where are the different requests coming in. Like our plan is to, like, we're Microsoft a global service, so figuring out like where should we go next for the different well, for your particular scenario. What do you care about? Um, Asia mainly. There's a lot of recognition receipts we get through, and we have to recognize them in um, different languages around Asia. So it's language. Receipt consistency is about the same, so it's a very similar receipt. It's the language that. Okay. All right, great. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Yeah, how different can the um, layouts be, the layout of the document be when you're training your model? Sorry? Like take, take, for instance, pay stubs. They're all going to have the same data, but they're going to be they're going to be slightly different layouts. So how well will that work? So for the training data, uh, if you have uh, different types of documents, you need to bring five for every layout, five samples, or an empty layout for each layout that you have, and the system will train on that. You can put everything in one blob, so when you analyze, the system will basically first cluster, send it to the right layout, and then extract the information. But you'll need to train it on five samples from each layout. Okay. Thank you. 
have any plans to expand the Japanese document? Because we had two bytes characters. To expand to? Expand Japanese. Uh, Japanese? So yeah, additional languages are in our roadmap. Uh, our public preview starts with English and supports English, and uh, it will also support uh, English character languages, but if there's accents on the top and stuff like that, that may be removed. We're planning to expand the languages as all services, cognitive services. Thank you. I think the other guy just answered one of my questions, but just to confirm, so if you've got multiple potential formats and you're not sure which one it is when you send the document, uh, it'll be able to tell which potential or which of the multiple trained forms this applies to? Yeah, so if you train your doc your model on all these different samples, the first thing we do is we cluster. So when you once you send a document for analysis, we cluster it. We route it to the same to the, the same type that it was trained on, and then we see what what keys were discovered for that type more table, and we will we will extract the data based on that uh, template. Awesome. And if I may have a second question, um, do the images for obviously for the training it totally makes sense to have them in in, in Azure, but for operation, do those images have to be somewhere on Azure, or is there a way to API or pull them from other locations where the, the images may be residing? So for the hosted service, uh, the, the training data needs to be on a blob. If you want the images on premise, because they can't leave the, the, um, the company or the corporate, then we have a container solution where you can deploy form recognized as a container on premise, and then the data will stay within the container and on, within on premise. Thank you. I think you just answered both of my questions too, so awesome. thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, maybe a bit of a crossover question. There are common documents used for customer onboarding, so driver's licenses and passports. They don't always have tags like that says name or whatever, but they're all very common formats. Is there any thought to making those one of the standard? Yeah, so those are things we're looking at. We started with receipts and we're looking to see kind of where's the customer signal from you all to say like, IDs come up a bunch, um, where it's like, like you said, they don't have like the key value pairs, and they're pretty standard looking across. Yeah, some of them are like, some of them have keys and some of them don't, so yep. it's kind of hard to find. Yep. yep, so we're thinking through those. Yeah. Okay, Thanks. great, thanks. Uh, are there any APIs available to, um, to get these documents in, like instead of blob or? Yeah, so the APIs, the, the everything is on REST API. The training data um, ha it needs to sit on a blob, but the, the REST API calls the blob. Okay. And all the, the service is in public preview, so if you go to the documentation, you can see all the API reference and try it out. Okay, and another question is, uh, like, what are the other models that are you going to work on after the, um, the, uh, the receipts? Is there any plan on that? So, um, we're still, like we have others on our roadmap, but not any we can share right now. Okay, and if we have like a specific, like we process millions of invoices today in our organization, so is there a partnership we can work with Microsoft on, on this and try to work? Yeah, I think definitely I contact Netta or me and we can see, I think invoices, uh, uh, we hear that a lot as another one that kind of looks the same across a lot of, like there's definitely unique invoices, but overall like receipts, there's some invoices that just looked universally the same, and so that's definitely uh, something we're looking at. Nick, uh, is it possible to extract data, for, or uh, metadata from files? So the, the form recognizer extracts the key value pairs and the, and the tables out of the files. If you go to our knowledge mining cognitive search uh, session, uh, you'll hear how you can take files and put them into a pipeline and add ma metadata and search and indexes to them uh, to enrich your, your data. We can extract the metadata as part of the process, like file name, MIME type. So the, the form recognized returns the file name as part of the, but it doesn't return the other properties um, from, the, from the file. Okay, thank you. I think you might have answered my question, but I'll ask it anyway. Um, you showed an example with Python, um, but as far as like a flow or logic app, um, are there connectors or is that just an API? connector that is needed to? There are SDKs, C-sharp SDKs, and there is a REST API that you can call in C-sharp, Java, any Python, or any other language um, to invoke the form recognizer service. Okay, so, so that is built in with the logic apps? Yes, that, yes, we, so we have a solution that have using logic app to invoke form recognizer. Perfect, thank you. You mentioned that handwriting is not supported yet. Um, is there a way to extract signatures or anything like that as an image? 
So um, we're looking into that from the vision side. Uh, we don't have any offering right now, but that is um, uh, something we're looking at. Okay, thanks. And last question because we're out of time, and then you can come to us offline. So for the samples that you guys used, uh, what would be the response time um, for the API? So the response time is very quick for documents. Um, I don't know exact, but it's really fast. So it's like sub-seconds, sub-seconds? Yeah, sub-seconds, so totally sub-seconds. And we'll take your question offline because they need the stage for the next session. Thank you, everybody.